The earth is God's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is God who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Lift up your head, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the ruler of glory shall enter in. Who is this ruler of glory? It is God, strong and mighty. It is God, the Lord of hosts. This is the ruler of glory. As Christmas trees are lighted, as people rush to shop and send their cards, as Christmas songs are heard everywhere, Lord, keep us close to you, that the one whose coming we celebrate, Jesus Christ, may be honored in all that we do. May all that we do in this season shine forth with your love. We are your people. Love through us. Let Christ be seen in us. For we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing, daughter Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves you. He will take great delights in you. 
In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. The gift of love comes to us in the Christ child of Christmas. But God's love is always available to us. We never need to question the love of God. When life is scary or things seem bad, we are never really alone. God is with us. We are the outpouring of God's love, and we can share it when we share the good news of Jesus. We light now the candle of love. Let us pray. Holy God of love, thank you for being with us. And thank you for Jesus, who taught us how to love. Help us to share your love with one another and with all the world. Help us to shine with the light of your love. Give us courage these days to live lives of love for you, for one another, and for all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves, our hearts and our minds and our spirits to know its true meaning. Let us hear the words of the prophets as they foretold the coming of the Messiah and the redemption of God's waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns and join with all creation as we proclaim a message of hope, a message of peace, a message of joy, a message of love. Let us celebrate the promise fulfilled in Jesus Christ. But first, let us pray for this world that God loves so very much. And for those who have not heard the good news, for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, and for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may lay aside all fear and may dwell in pure joy, lifting up the light of love. Church, these prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God 
as we use the words that Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson. To God's people in exile, in a faraway land, the prophet Isaiah announces the good news. God is coming back and bringing the exiles home. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. And all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows upon them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God endures forever.
second lesson. The prophet Jeremiah offers hope for our righteous bench, a just king who is yet to come. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I shall raise up for David a righteous branch, a, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Third lesson, to a nation grown weary of war and weapons, God promises a king who will establish a reign of peace. Zechariah 9 verses 9 through 10. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Euphraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth.
prophet Haggai promises to God's people a temple even more glorious than the temple of old. Haggai, chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. The prophet Isaiah announces the renewal both of the land and of God's people on the coming day of redemption. Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1 through 6. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shall shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Sixth Lesson The Angel Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to a ruler whose reign shall never end. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35 and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The seventh lesson, Jesus proclaims the coming of the kingdom of God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to see him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, 
Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved, we are the people of God, called by God to proclaim God's love to God's people. We are called to love and be love in this world, because this is how we share the good news of Jesus Christ. This is what we wait for, what we long for, to see God reach out and touch the earth. We have dressed our homes in their seasonal finery. We have heard the stories and sung the songs of God touching the lives of Elizabeth and Mary, of God shaking the status quo, of God inviting us to partner with God's own self to work for justice and peace, bringing good news to the poor, bringing sight to the blind, setting the captives free. We have been invited to partner with God's own self to lift up the lowly and scatter the proud, to fill the hungry with good things and send the rich empty away. We have been invited to partner with God's own self as we tend to the radical work of Advent, waiting listening to the voices of women, centering the experiences of the marginalized, and speaking truth to power. Yes, this is love. Yes, it's about some of this feel-good love and the warmth of home and family. But the love of God, the radical, challenging, overwhelming reality of God's love is contained in the incarnation. God's love came down at Christmas in the Christ child. And this love changed the world. This love brought down rulers and kings. This love condemned empire. This love overcame death. Oh, church, we are awaiting people 
always waiting, always waiting, and yet Jesus is ever present. We have God's love available to us and in us to share with all the world. Church, God's love was not born into a world of lavishness and comfort or privilege. Let us not be caught up in our own comforts and privilege if we truly wish to labor in love and birth a new creation. As we tend to God's kingdom here, let us put in the hard work of reflection and conversation, of relationship building, of forgiveness for others and for ourselves. Yes, it is hard work. Yes, it can be painful. But if we are serious about our calling, if we are serious about sharing the good news, if we are serious about being the hands and feet and love of God in this world, then we have to be ready to get dirty. Too often we sanitize the incarnation. We picture a quiet and tidy baby wrapped in a blanket, tucked sweetly in the hay. But birth is not like that. Babies aren't like that. Birth is bloody and messy, and babies are slippery and wet and loud. And the incarnate word was wrapped in swaddling cloths, strips of linen, and held in the moment between life and death in his mother's arms. And so are we, lovingly held between life and death in the hands of God. We are a people called forth to love. Nobody ever said it was going to be easy. But we are called just the same. And we live our lives securely held by God's love, following in the example of the incarnate word, to share hope, to share peace, to share joy, to share love even in this world. Amen. In the Advent seasons, when the past has fled unmasked away and there is nothing left to do but wait, God Shelter us. Be our surrounding darkness. Be the fertile soil out of which hope springs in due time. In these uncertain times, help us to greet the dawn and labor on. Love on in faith awaiting your purpose, hid in your waiting to be born in due time. Amen.
be people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your own community. Share love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for this world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share love, joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen.